If you're into cooking, then you've probably seen this ad. What's the one question I get asked the most? What pans do you use at home? Well, today I'm ready to lift a curtain and tell you that I'm using Hexlad. Gordon Ramsay apparently uses these pans, and they're really gorgeous, but I'm skeptical about their hybrid technology. Especially when they want you to pay about $100 for an 8-inch pan. There are also other hybrid pans out there, just like this Anilon X pan, which claims it could give you the perfect sear, but also be non-stick. In this video, I'm going to do an initial comparison test between these expensive pans and a couple of cheap pans that I picked up at HomeGoods. Weighing the pans can give you an idea of the quality of the pan. Lighter pans tend to be cheaper, like this t fowl pan, which is just one layer of aluminum, but heavier pans, like the Allclad, Anilon X, and Hexclad, have multiple layers which can help give the pans better heat retention and help it distribute heat evenly. For the first test, I'm going to see how quick each pan can boil 200 grams of water. This can give you an idea of how easily the pan can transfer heat. Being the lightest and thinnest pan of them all, the Tefal pan boiled water in 1 minute and 51 seconds. The all-clad pan was the heaviest out of all the pans, but it ended up boiling water in 2 minutes and 15 seconds. The Anilon X pan took the longest and boiled water in 2 minutes and 32 seconds. Lastly, the Hexclad pan took 2 minutes and 20 seconds to boil water. For the next experiment, I'm going to wipe the pans with an oil-soaked paper towel to get an even coating of the smallest amount of oil possible, and then I'll cook an egg to see how each pan performs. With minimal oil, the t fowl pan performed as expected. The egg actually didn't stick too bad, and then once the egg was fully scrambled, there was very minimal egg residue on the pan, and whatever was stuck to the pan cleaned up easily with a damp towel. The all-clad pan performed the same as the t fowl pan. With minimal oil, the egg stuck to the pan a little and left some residue, which was easy to clean with a damp towel. With minimal oil, the Anilon X pan performed pretty bad. The egg performed the same way as the other pans when it was on the non-stick surface, but when it was on the exposed metal cross hashing, the egg stuck to this as if it was just stainless steel with no oil. A damp towel cleaned most of the residue, but no amount of scrubbing released the stuck egg that was on the metal. I had to let it soak a bit to clean it up. With minimal oil, the Hexclad actually performed better than the cheaper t fowl and all-clad pans. There was less egg residue on the pan, and whatever was stuck to the pan came off with a damp towel. In this next test, I'll let one ounce of shredded cheese melt and burn on the pan to see if it sticks. The t fowl pan performed really well. The burnt cheese didn't stick to the pan, and you could stir the cheese around the pan without using a utensil. The all-clad pan also performed well. The cheese didn't stick to the pan, and you could slide it around without using a utensil. The Anilon X pan was weird. The cheese technically stuck to the pan, but it didn't stick at the same time. The cheese got stuck to the hash marks in the middle of the pan, but when you use the utensil, you could lift the cheese clean off. The Hexclad performed just like the Anilon X pan. Since both pans are hybrids, they have surface area of exposed metal and also non-stick surface, which makes this cheese oddly stick but not stick at the same time. The Allclad, Hexclad, and Anilon X pans are oven safe to 500 degrees. In this test, I'll put 500 grams of water in each pan and put them in the oven at 500 degrees for an hour. After that hour, I'll let the pan sit on the stove top and take the temperature measurements of the water at 5 and 15 minutes to test heat retention. After both 5 and 15 minutes, the Anilon X pan kept the water hotter for longer. The Allclad came in a close second and the Hexclad came in last. This didn't really surprise me because both the Anilon X and Allclad pans were pretty close in weight, but I think this is just because the Allclad has a heavier handle. Next I did a sear test with the hybrid pans versus our stainless steel control. The stainless steel pan was just a $20 Calphalon pan from Home Goods. I did my best to use the same amount of oil and sear them for the same amount of time, and as you can see, they all pretty much just look the same. One thing is for certain though, the mess left on each pan doesn't look the same. 
It should be no surprise that the cleanup of the hexclad and Anilon X pans were about four times faster than the cleanup from the stainless steel pan. But this brings up the question, are the Anilon X and hexclad pans worth it? Besides maybe some easier cleanup, I would say no. If you get a cheaper nonstick pan that is oven safe and a cheaper stainless steel pan, you can do everything that these pans can do for half the cost. I personally believe that nonstick pans should be babied. You should only use silicone utensils and nothing with sharp edges. I never understood why companies go out of their way to develop nonstick pans that are metal utensil safe. I always feel like they're trying to make a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. But that's just my opinion. Let me know if you think these tests were fair, and if you would still buy a Hexclad or Anilon X pan, and why.